you know, I've been preaching a series called, Do You Know, Do you know the Time? And, uh, and today, if I have the time, uh, I will go into the dream of Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar. But if, if, if you don't mind, I want to I wanna share some things from my heart first, if, if, uh, if you're okay with it. And I, then I'll connect them uh, to the message, amen? Uh, because the Lord put in my heart to say a couple of things, and, uh, and I, I want to be obedient if that's okay. Amen? And so, so yesterday, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I got invited to a barbecue. And, uh, and, uh, and I ate a lot. No, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, can I tell you, man, God really wants to use you. You know, he, he wants you to be uh, the light of the world, the light of this world. Uh, man, I hope you understand uh, that people are looking to you. And you that are believers, you do, those of you who are saved by grace, who are full of the Holy Ghost, you know you're saved, you know in your heart, man, you are the light of the world. And God wants to use you. And there's a world out there that, that does not know Christ. And man, and like the Bible says, we got to take advantage of every opportunity to speak the things that we believe. Can I hear an amen? amen. So uh, I got invited to a barbecue, but there was something you said, like, well, what's so important about a barbecue? Well, in this barbecue were all my high school friends. All, all my friends that I literally left behind when I came to Jesus, uh, I can tell you some of these friends have been praying for them for decades. And some of them I haven't seen for years, 20, 25 years ago, a long time ago. And uh, it just happens that they, 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 they all call me, right? Like, men, Marvin, please come. And we really haven't gone together, you know, like that for a long time. And though I know where they're at, I, I, I know their beliefs, I know, I know the things they do. I, I, know that I know my friends very, I still know, I know them. I keep up with their, with their life and their families, right? I love them to death even though I haven't seen them. Uh, we came together and many was like, it was like years and past, it's weird, right? Like how the people that, 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 that you care about, you don't see them for years, but it's just like nothing has ever happened. And, uh, and uh, before I went, though, I, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, oh, you know, there's only two reasons I'm going there. Uh, number one, to see my friends. But number two, I know that I know that you're setting me up here. I, I mean, I just knew it, right? And I remember walking in there and all my friends said, man, we hug, we cry. We like, man, we haven't seen each other for a long, long time. And uh, it was funny how, you know, been there for about maybe 40 minutes. And sure enough, there, here comes one person. Marvin, how did you come to the Lord? Just like that. And I said to myself, man, he said, this easy? <laughs> and, and I want to tell you, people of God, man, and, and, and I don't know if it's good or bad, but I'm the same person everywhere. Man, I really don't change for, not, for nobody, man. I'm like, I'm going to preach about Jesus. You got it, buddy. And man, I began to, to tell him about my testimony. I began to tell him how, how Jesus reached out to my life, and, and I preached Jesus crucified. I preached the cross to them, to all my friends, right there in a circle, with their beers in their hands, with their alcohol, their cigarettes, just like I was one day. I preached the gospel to them. It was kind of how... I was there with a Dr. Pepper. Thank you, what my man. <laughs> it's, a, it's an inside job between me and my wife. I was there with a the Dr. Pepper, and they're all just in a big circle. You know when the Holy Spirit speaks that the people get silent and they don't know what to say? You know what I'm talking about? It was while I was there talking, and there was this silence around among them, just listening to the things that I was saying. And you know what? I praise God for the, you know, the revelation that he's given me of him in my life. 
that I'm able to boldly proclaim him. And that, you know what? And the greatest thing, you know, like, I can be a testimony for them. And I can take advantage of that time. And you know what? They knew, they knew I was a preacher. And you know, like, and, and, and I think sometimes people want to know if you really are authentic. And that devil is also there to tempt you, to see. And the Lord is also there. The angels of the Lord are also there to see if you will speak Christ. And you know what? It's the easiest thing. When you love the Lord, it's the easiest thing. I proclaimed the gospel, told them about Jesus, and man, they, I was just so, so overjoyed for the opportunity that God gave me because I've been praying for some of my friends for at least 20 years, at least 20 years, people of God. And I want to tell you, so at the same time, I want to encourage you, if you have family, friends, right? Man, I want to tell you that you are the light of the world, that, that, that you are the voice that, you know, when, you, when they invite you to those barbecues and those places, you are the one who's supposed to stand out. You are supposed to be the one that's different. You are supposed to be the one that says, Jesus Christ. You are the one supposed to preach. You are the one. It's you. You. Say, say, say with me. Say, it's me. me. Say it. I, I want you to grab your finger like this and point it to you and say, it's me. God is calling you. It's you. And you know what? If you're willing... And if you're willing and obedient, man, God will send you to those places. You know, and these things happen to me all the time, but it is, I guess this time was very incredible, special, because it's people that you really care about. Can I hear an amen? amen. And uh, so, man, God wants to use you. God wants to send you to the lost. He wants to send you to your lost friends. You lost family, you know, the, the, you lost community, and, uh, and use you. And, and man, and can I tell you something, man? It was, it's the easiest thing. If you love Jesus, it's the easiest thing that you can do. Hallelujah. You know, like, uh, it, it was wild because I can hear the, the concerns, right? Their unbelief, their doubts, their sins, right? You can see all these things mixed together, right, in a conversation. But, man, but you can see how, how the love of Christ just reaches out. Man, how, just, how the love of Christ just is ready to, like, man, to impart knowledge, to impart conviction, man, to set words. When I left, when I left the place, because... I left, I mean, I left there. It was like 9 o'clock. I had to go back home and get ready for today. It, you know, it was wild how they, they all came to me and they're like, man, Marvin, he goes, thank you for speaking. He goes, because you answer many of my questions. Imagine that, people of God. So I want to encourage you this morning. I want to encourage you because... God wants to use you incredibly. Can I hear an amen? amen? So, you know, we're talking about, you know, Nebuchadnezzar today. We're talking about Daniel. And here Daniel was a teenager. Daniel was, I think he was 16 years old, people of God. When, you know, when he was taken as a slave. He was taken as a slave from Israel and, and I want to tell you, if I may, can I, can I speak boldly, people of God? Will you mind? Uh, you know, uh, Daniel was from the wealthy class, from the elite class of Israel. He was, a, 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 you know, a family that was educated. It was a family that knew their God. Uh, they knew the Torah. And, uh, you know, Nebuchadnezzar's army came into Israel and they, he annihilated them. He destroyed the temple. He, he destroyed. He did everything he wanted to do. God had brought judgment to Israel. He, Israel was the chosen people of God. But they have gone so far away from God that God judged them. And the way he judged them, he destroyed everything they had and sent them into captivity back to Babylon. 
And here's Daniel, a 16-year-old. He had no fault. He was just a kid. He, he, he wasn't, he, his sins didn't accumulate to the, to the country. I mean, he, he had nothing to do with his father's sins. He had nothing to do with his grandfather's sin. He didn't have nothing to do with his uncle's sin. And here's a, a teenager, right? Now putting shackles, bound in shackles, to walk all the way to Babylon as a slave. And you might say, man, that is not fair. That is not, that, I mean, why would God allow that? What is wrong with God that he will allow this to happen to this young man? And to finish it off, you know, Daniel becomes, uh, 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 you know, he, he becomes to work in the courts of God. So he's, uh, uh, I mean, what's the right word, mom? Who can help me with the right word? I forget, Pastor Bas, the, he became an Enoch, okay? Daniel became an Enoch. Is that, did I say that right? A eunuch. Yeah, he became a eunuch. And what, you know what that means, right? That means that they forcefully cut some of his members so that way he cannot have kids. Here's a teenage boy. What was, what was his fault? What did he do wrong? He had done nothing wrong. You know what? If there was somebody in the Bible that I believe had reason to be bitter, anger, walk away from God, do all the things and say, you know what? What am I even doing here? Was Daniel. If there was somebody that can mend, I believe that it was somebody that could raise his hand and say, God, why was Daniel? Such a young man. He was a, he was a very bright young man. So now he found himself in the courts of Babylon, but he was, God was with him. Say with me, God was with him. And see, what Daniel didn't know was that God has sent him there with purpose. Say with me, God has sent me with purpose. See, he was going to Babylon, and Babylon was a, was a, a, a country that was very ungodly. You know, Babylon was a, a, a country that, was, that didn't have covenant with God. They didn't know who the God of the Bible was. They had their own gods, and we know that all those gods were demons. You know, but they didn't know. They didn't know Christ. They didn't know Jehovah. They had no idea who he was. But here's Daniel found himself in this country, a young man in the courts of of Nebuchadnezzar, but because God was with him. Say, God was with him. Because the same way that God was with Daniel is the same way that God is with you. And God sent Daniel there with purpose because God was going to use Daniel to transform that kingdom and transform the king. Hallelujah. You know what? If you would understand your position, if you would just come out from among them, if you understand your position, understand that you're a godly man, a godly woman. If you don't understand that you are, that you are filtering this world as a man of God, as a woman of God, you will preach to kings. You, God will use you to transform kingdoms, companies, schools, communities, families. And see, Daniel was there. He didn't really understand why he was there because he was forced to be there. But in the middle of it, you find men, a young man. This is, man, I, I, I love when I get to heaven, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit down and hear Daniel speak because he's a young man who never changed his ways, even though he had gone through so much the way he loved God. He had the opportunity to be bitter, anger, but he would not, he would not change. Amen. Like, so there's a story that, that they wanted him to eat the meats of the kings and, and drink what they drank, but, but Daniel says, I, I will not I would not do that. I mean, he, he had his diet. He, he continued 
to, to follow in the rules of his religion. He continued to believe in Jehovah meant so much that he found so much favor with God that when God would answer his prayers, he would say, you beloved of God. That's how the angels approached to Daniel. They came to him and said, man, Daniel, you are the beloved one of God. I mean, isn't that so cool? Imagine that an angel appeared to you and say, man, you, the beloved of God. Wouldn't that be some awesome words to hear? But this is who Daniel was. A young man in a country not of his own, as a slave, as a slave, you know, he couldn't have family anymore. But his love for God was just incredible. He was just, he knew he had, he knew that in the middle of it, God was with him. They changed his name, you know, Meshach, Shamrach, and Abednego, the, all their names were changed. They understood the blessing of God. Let me say that again. They understood the blessing of God, that wherever they went, God was with them. And because God was with them, the blessing of God was with them all the time. This is why David will say, like the song that we sang, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. He, they understood that wherever they went, that God was with them. And because God was with them, goodness and mercy followed them always. Can I hear an amen? amen. I, I want to tell you, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Man, I, I, if you don't believe that, man, you need to get closer to God because I want to tell you, goodness and mercy are pursuing me. Man, they pursue me so fast that I'm like, I, I, they, they have pursued me so fast that now I'm pursuing them. Hallelujah. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. See, it's so important to understand God's blessing. And see, look, look if, if I may move away from Daniel for a minute, you know, oh, you know Jacob, you know, Jacob, he tricked his father to bless him. Hey, Jacob, his name was Trickster, right? And uh, he, he, you know, he wanted the blessing of his father. Just like many of us grew up just wanting the blessing of our father. Anybody in the house? You just wanted your dad to tell you, I love you, you're blessed. You know, me, uh, my sons, man, I, I, like, like my son, I, I dropped him off at school till he was, how, like 13? And I remember every time he got out of the car, I would go give him a hug and I kiss him and I tell him, bless you. And the older he got, right, the less, the less he wanted to give me hugs. Anybody in the house? And, and, uh, and I told him one day, he, he, like, he was like, he like kind of wanted to push. I said, look, if I don't hug you out here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run after you to the classroom. He said, no, you're not going to do that. I go, yes, I do. And I go, I'll go in your class in front of your teachers, your students. And he's like, you wouldn't do that. I go, I go, son, look at me. You think I wouldn't do that? He goes, he looks at me and he goes, yeah, yeah, you would. Yeah, you would. Yeah, you know, because we as fathers, that's, that's what we should do. We should bless our children. And see, Daniel, Daniel grew up with that. He grew up understanding the blessing of the father. But more than that, more than that, people of God, he understood the blessing that came from God. Because there's a difference. And see, Jacob, he, he, he cheated his brother. He wanted to hear his dad just tell him, give him a blessing. But he understood that in the, in the Jewish religion, it was the older brother who got the blessing. It was always the older brother who got the hands on the head. And you should be blessed in the city and in the hills and this and that. And, 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 the, and the youngest brother, like me, I'm number six. You get the leftovers. You know, like you get the leftovers from the older ones. And, and, the, and the men, and, and, and you want that. And we as boys, man, I'm, any men in the house, we grew up with a man, dad, like, you know, like. And when the fathers are great and, and they bless their children, man, I commend you. You should always bless your children. But here Jacob grew up, man, cheated his father for the blessing. 
And then we see that after 14 years later, he's coming back from working 15 years with his wife. And in the middle of the night, he begins to wrestle with an angel. He begins to wrestle with an angel. And the Bible says that he wrestles with him all night. And you said, you might say, man, pastor, is that true? Man, let me tell you, if you don't understand getting up in the middle of the nights to pray, you'll understand wrestling with God in the nights. And the man, and, and, and the, here's Jacob wrestling with an angel all night long. And, and before the night ends, the angel tells Jacob, he goes, let me go because I got to leave. And, and, and Jacob says these words, he goes, I will not let you go till you. Hey, didn't his father bless him already? Didn't he understood the blessing that was on his life? But yet here, Jacob, you see a clear picture. He was dying to know his heavenly father. He wanted to know the blessing that came from God. He had worked 14 years. He had been tricked to work seven years. He probably wondered, man, this cannot be the blessing of God. It cannot be the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is not the blessing that my father lay on me, you know? But then he's wrestling with the angel, and the angel tells him, what is your name? He says, Jacob, well, your name will be no longer called Jacob. Your name now is Israel. And it changes the blessing of God will change your name. You know, like yesterday, my friends, they, the way they called me, the way they said my name was different. Because the way they knew me and the way that I'm now is night and day. Because when God's blessing comes, when, when, the, when the blessing that comes from the Father transforms your life. The blessing that comes from the Father transforms your life. Many in these days that we are living, so many single moms, the dad is absent. And you wonder how these children grow without the love and the blessing of their father. But I want to tell you, I want to tell you, the blessing that comes from God is the one you want. Amen. When the Lord says, you are blessed, is you are blessed. And I want to tell you, in the New Testament, it says that the blessing of Abraham now comes through Jesus Christ. Oh, it says, the blessing comes through his seed, not many, but seed, which means Jesus. It says, now you have the blessing. The blessing that comes from Abraham is now yours. In other words, you are blessed. If you understand the blessing of Abraham, you will remain in your position. You will understand what it is to stand for God. And this is what Daniel had. Daniel understood the blessing of his father. The blessing that came from God. His father were, were dead. His father were killed. They were, they, they were killed in that when, when Nebuchadnezzar came, they destroyed them all. So now he caught himself along with his three friends. But in the middle of it, he excelled. The Bible said that he was 10 times better than anybody else. Imagine that. So man, don't ever, don't ever underestimate your pain. Let me say that again. Don't ever underestimate your pain because if you can use that pain for God, God will use you in ways that we can't imagine. Don't ever underestimate. Don't ever look down on your pain. Don't ever look down on the things you've gone through. All those things will make you, and those things made Daniel who he was. A young man solid with a steel back. Man, I'm broken. His friends, Meshach, Shamrock, and then you go, we continue to speak about them, how they threw him in the fire. And he said, King, you can throw us in the fire, but we will not bow down to you. We will serve God whether you burn us or not. And he says, what happens? But in the mix of the fire, there was a fourth one. One that looked like the son of man. Jesus himself came 
and surrounded them in the mix of the fire. Because they didn't allow their pain, circumstances, issues of life to destroy their purpose. They understood. They, they minimized it. It wasn't that they didn't have pain. They did. They had incredible pain. But they didn't allow the pain to have them. The pain. They used the pain as a, as a force to love their God even more and more. Hallelujah. So now we have a clash. We come back to Daniel in the dream, and we have a clash now. The clash, here comes a man that's unsaved. A ruler, a king, Nebuchadnezzar. Here comes, here comes a king that doesn't know who Jehovah is. But God has positioned a young man. He has positioned a man of God in a place so that way he can be the light of Babylon. Hallelujah. He positioned him perfectly in the right place at the right time. People, some people sometimes don't even know who are in the place they are. Here's Daniel positioned perfectly with a king that does not know God. But the king is about to have a dream. <laughs> God's about to set up the king and the man of God. And neither one of them know because God's purpose are above our very own. That's why obedience is so important when God says, go here, son. Go there, son. Go here, woman of God. Stand here, daughter. There's a purpose. There's, there's, God is doing something. God is doing something. God is preparing you for something. God is, God is moving you from something. And Daniel, man, what a, what a character, man. What, a, what an awesome. The other reason I love the book of Daniel is because there is nothing negative said about him. You, you, you read from, from corner to corner and you hear nothing negative about Daniel. Imagine that, people of God. You know, like, man, I look at myself in the mirror and I find 10 things, you know? But here's a man that God, the way God looked at him and the way God viewed him and the way God answered his prayers, it was of a man that understood God's blessing. Can I hear an amen? amen. So, so Nebuchadnezzar has a dream, and, and I, wanted, I wanted to go and read out. In my mind, I thought this was going to be like a class, but it's not. <laughs> Can I hear an Amen. So I'm going to go through the dream real quick. And, 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 you know, when you guys have time, if you will read Daniel chapter 2, because it will help you when we, when we move back to Revelation. Amen? Daniel chapter 2. So this is the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. We're talking about, do you know the time? Do you know the time we're living in? Do you, can you see the clock? Can you understand what's going on with this culture? Do you see what's happening? Do you have eyes to see? Are your eyes open? And this is why we're preaching this, this, this series because the Lord does not want us to not know. He wants us to know the days that we are living in because God has handpicked you to live in this time, in this season, in this very hour. God picked you to live here. You are, you are here for a purpose. You are not here just to breathe air. God has, he has wonderfully made you in your mother's womb if with purpose and with something incredible that only you can do. Hallelujah. So this is the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. He had a, he had a dream of a statue. So what he did, it was something not done ever before. He called his magi, all the wise men, all the, the brujos, the witches, all the people he called them. And he says, I had a dream, and I want you to tell me what the dream is. And I want you to tell me its meaning. And everybody's like, what? You want me to tell you what you dream? Yes. I want you to tell me what I dream and the interpretation. King, nobody has ever asked that ever. Well, if you don't tell me my dream... And the meaning of it, I'm going to kill all of you all. Stop right there, people, because that sounds mean, right? But look, here's a man. 
Here's a man that does not know God, that has just a dream in the night, and he's willing to kill people for its meaning. Man, we are living, we see the days we are living, and we, and we live like nothing is going on. Yeah, here's a man, here's a man that doesn't even know God, and he's concerned about what he's seeing in the night. So should we. We should be people, we should take a lesson from Nebuchadnezzar and be people that want to know and understand the things that we are seeing clearly in the days that we are living. Hallelujah. But this man was willing to kill them all. See, I'm going to, if you don't tell me what I dream. So sure enough, you know, it gets to Daniel. Daniel, if you don't tell the, the king said, if you, don't, if you don't know his dream and the interpretation, he's going to kill all the wise men. And Daniel was one of the wise men. So was Meshach. So was Shamrach. So was Abednego. So then, you know, like any true believer, he went to his friend and he's like, dude, we need to pray. <laughs> because if we don't, they're going to chop all of our heads, you know. So sure enough, they, they begin to pray. And in the middle of the night, God gives, God gives Daniel Nebuchadnezzar's dream and his interpretation. And here's the dream. Daniel tells him, O oh, king, this is what you saw. A statue with a head of gold, the breast of silver, the belly and thighs of bronze or brass, the legs of iron, and the feet and toes of clay. And a man like, I can just imagine, imagine you had a dream. And somebody comes and tells you, you dream and the interpretation, you'll be like, man, that, that is, that's got to be God. But see, you got to understand how God works, man. You got to understand that we never know, we never know the words that we are going to say to a person that's lost. We never know what his effects are going to be. We never know. The things that we say about God, the effect that's going to have on a person that does not know God. But I want to tell you, after this dream, Nebuchadnezzar was never the same. He was never the same. You know, Nebuchadnezzar is even called the servant of God in the Bible. Imagine that. After this, Nebuchadnezzar was never the same. I pray, I pray that us here, that every time we engage with somebody that does not know Jesus, the man that when we leave, that they will never be the same. I pray that we be like Daniel, bold and pray and be able to speak about the wonders of our God. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. So, you know, so Daniel is about to give him the interpretations, you know, and, and, the, and, and, and the reason I'm, I'm talking about these people of oh God, because this is, this is from Babylon to the feet is history from there to the end of days, to what kind of kingdom is going to be here in the end of days. You know, like, like we said last week, Jesus said, the last days will be like the days of Lot and the days of Noah. So what exactly, but you know, but, but you got to remember this, that, that before, bef before Lot came out, right, all these things were happening. Uh, judgment didn't come until, until the angel came and took Lot out. Judgment didn't start until God put Noah and his family in the ark and shot it, right? So, so but, but what was going on? What, what, was, what was going on before God brought judgment on, 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 a, on Lot's days and on Noah's day? What was going on? Well, I, I tell you fighting. There's a bunch of them, but these are the main fight things that were going on. Number one, there was an incredible amount of immorality, an incredible amount of immorality. I mean, everything went. Let me just leave it right there. 
Uh, there was nothing hidden no more. There was no, there was no honor in, in sexuality no more. Immorality was going rampant, number one. Number two, wickedness had increased. The, the people in the land were wicked. That's number two. Number three, there was corruption. Oh my goodness, like I, I sound like the news. <laughs> there was corruption in the land, an incredible amount of corruption. Number four, there was a violence. The heart of men were always, their impulses were always to violence. And number five, the thoughts of men were always towards evil. And like Jesus, like, like the Bible says later on, what one time was good became evil, and what was evil became good. And those are the days that we rapidly approaching. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hallelujah. So this is right here. It's, a, it's history. And uh, you guys ready for the interpretation? Yes? Yes, you ready? Okay. Well, then you're going to have to come back next week. I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stand to your feet, people. Oh, God, I love that. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, that means I, I, I can. Yeah, yeah, I love that. <laughs> Glory to Jesus.